everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bead Boutique. So I've been making and teaching how to make jewelry for a very long time. And one of the comments that I always hear is, you make it look so easy. Well, I think it is. And I wanna show you just how easy it can be. So I'm gonna take some simple parts and some simple techniques and put them together and teach you how to make your very own jewelry. If you wanna see what I'm making today, come and join me. Well, hello everybody. So this is the first time that I am recording in my new studio. Well, it's not really a new studio, but in my new home. <laughs> I've just carved out a little corner of the basement so you can hear the uh, furnace running and it's probably a bit echoey, but for a while this is kind of what I'm gonna have to do. So anyway, I'm, so, I'm really excited to start a recording again because it's actually been a minute. Um, so today you're gonna get a bonus. You're gonna get two projects. One of the comments I get all the time or requests, I guess, is that I make more men's bracelets. And I've often said that men's bracelets aren't really my thing, but you know, I've seen a few nice ones around and I thought maybe I should come up with a couple. So you're gonna get two different ones today. So we're gonna start with a super easy, simple one, but it looks really awesome on, and I think any guy will love to wear it, or even a girl, I, you know, it's not really uh, just a masculine one, it could be a unisex one. So for this one, we're gonna be using some matte gray uh, wood, and this is in 10 millimeter size. And I've got some matte black onyx, and I have a couple of these large hole tiara cast beads. And we're gonna be using some 0.8 elasticity. This is what I think is the best product there is. I love that one. And we're gonna be using a bit of GS Hypo Cement. And for our tools, all we need is a pair of cutters or scissors, whatever you have on hand. Okay, so I've cut some of my elasticity, and I don't know, I usually cut about the length of my bead mat. I just find that that's kind of a good uh, working length. Now, you always wanna make sure with the elasticity that you stretch it, and you can see how much I'm stretching it. So I work my way down. Now, of course, you don't wanna pull so hard that you break it, but I am going to be stretching that out. One, that's so that your bracelet doesn't end up sagging on you, um, but two, that will also show you if there's any weak points in the elastic. So if it breaks now, this is actually a good thing and you'll just go into another piece. But I worked my way down and now that actually added probably a good three inches onto it. So that's the first thing that you always wanna do. And now we're just gonna start loading up the beads. So I'm going to start with my wood beads and just put those on. And you know, this is really just one of those super simple projects. But I saw something similar to this on, a, I was watching TV and I saw um, a guy, I don't even can't remember what show it was on, but he was wearing a wood bracelet that had some black onyx on it. And I thought, you know, that might make kind of a nice little project for a man's bracelet, because again, it is a request that I get all the time. And I always think, oh, well, that would just be so simple. But honestly, trying to get together some colors that I think men would wear has always been a challenge for me. So I thought, well, let's just keep it nice and simple. And that's usually what um, men tend to like. Now these beads, um, they don't have all of their holes completely sort of drilled out. They have little ridges and things like that. It won't cause a problem with your elastic in that it won't you know, cut it or anything but it can make it a little um, harder to get in there. So just kind of wiggle it around until you get those in there. So you'll see this comes together in like literally a minute. Okay, so now I want to put on one of my big spacer beads. And now you can hear my furnace just went off. So there's going to be all kinds of different noises here that I have to get used to also. And we may hear my dog, you know, thundering down the stairs any moment now. But now I'm going to put on my black onyx. So the reason that I'm doing it in this um, order is that I want to end with one of my large hole beads because that's where we're going to hide our knot. So that's as simple as it is for how it's gonna look. It's just a really basic plain bracelet, but it looks really sharp on. I love the contrast of the black and the matte gray wood. All right, so now that we have our um, beads all on there, I'm going to be tying this. So the way that I tie it is I make just like you're gonna tie your um, shoes 
and then I'm going to wrap it around one more time. So it's kind of, it's like a surgeon's knot. So I get it in there nice and snug. I want to make sure that, you know, that it's um, nice and tight in there. And I'm pulling pretty tight. And then I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to go once and twice. And I kind of keep this taut down here. And then at the last second, I just kind of pull it all fast together. So it's so fast you don't even see what I do. But I'm pulling with some resistance here. And then I'm going to sort of let go and pull at the same time. And then that stops it from you know kind of coming apart so you don't ever want to do it so snug that you end up with a buckle on this so it's kind of that you know you have to you have to figure out the best um sort of area to do your knots it's the first couple times i used elastic i do have to admit i hated it i just could not get this to work i always ended up with my um things too tight and they buckled so it's just learning sort of how to do it you might have to waste uh, waste a little bit of elastic so now because we do have that um, big hole there, I can put a couple more knots in there. So again, put some tension on, pull that nice and tight, and then whoop, just kind of pull it tight. And you know, we can actually even do another one because men tend to be a little tougher on things. Now, if you are giving this to a man um, or even for yourself, don't wear it to bed and don't wear it in the shower. Things just fall apart that much faster when you do that. Okay, so now we're just gonna take a little bit of GS Hypo and I'm just gonna sort of isolate that knot. And that knot is really tight, but we're gonna put just a little dab of glue on there just to give it a little extra protection. Okay, so now we've taken a minute to let that dry. So now I'm just going to come in here and trim these off. Now you can trim them pretty close because we've done a succession of four knots and we've added a little bit of glue. So I'll trim that off. And then now you can just take that knot and pop it right inside that um, little hole there and you don't even see it. So that's the first bracelet that we've made and I think that one is really super stylish. It'll make a really great uh, gift. And of course this one will be available in kit form and I will have the link um, below in the description box. So you just go into the drop down menu below the video and you'll see a link that will take you to my fully secure website. So now let's get on to project number two, and I know that you're going to love this one. All right, so now we're gonna start this new project. So um, I've seen this knot around, and I've played around with it before, and just could never really come up with a project that I liked, but I finally figured out one, and I think you're gonna really love this. Now, I'm calling this a man's bracelet, but this is totally a unisex bracelet. It is so simple and so beautiful, and once you get used to making this knot, I think you're going to love it. So to make this bracelet, and I haven't named my bracelets yet, so that's why I'm calling it this bracelet. <laughs> but um, we're gonna be using, I think I've got about 90 inches of two millimeter leather. And I have six of these large hole decorative sort of distress beads from Tierra Cast. And then I picked one of the most sort of neutral looking um, buttons that I could find, cause that one kind of go, it's very unisex. And then we're gonna be using some GS Hypo cement and a pair of cutters. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my leather and I'm just gonna match up the two ends and then I'm gonna place on my button. So you'll see this button has a little bit of a divot in it. So I wanna make sure that I put the bumped out part to the sort of inside, I suppose it is, so that when we pull this down, it's going to come the way that I like it. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you like it the other way around, then you can go that way, but I think that that looks like the nicer side than that. So we're gonna start with that. So now, we're gonna be doing a snake knot. So it looks a little challenging, but once you get the hang of it, it is so simple. So I'm just gonna make sure I've got my hands right in the camera here. I'm actually looking for a change. <laughs> it's hard to do all these things at the same time. I'm right-handed, so if you are left-handed, you could just reverse this, but I'm going to um, work with my right hand. And you could, I guess, use something to clip this down, but I find it a whole lot easier to do it in my hand. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my piece on the right and I'm going to bend it like this and to, just to make like a little loop. So the, one of the things you can do is kind of go around your finger and then that will turn it into the right direction. You wanna have it so that this piece is coming over top. Now we're gonna take the one on the left and you're just gonna take the end of it and still holding on to that, I'm just gonna pull it through. So now you can see we've got this, we've got our little loop and we've got our left piece coming through. 
So now I want to sort of separate that so it's a little bit in the middle there. And I'm going to take that same other piece that I was working with on my left. So you're always just working with the left piece when you're doing the knotting part of it. So I'm going to take my end, I'm going to bring it around the outside and underneath, and I'm going to come through on this side of that leather. So where I've got like a hole here and a hole here, I'm coming underneath on that side. So now you want to always make sure that your leather is going on the outside like that. So this is kind of one of those things where you have the first one is always the hardest. So I want to get it sort of situated where I want it. Now I want to leave about a quarter of an inch there. So now that I've got it where I want, I can tighten up with the right hand side. And this will make sense to you once you start making them. The first one I made, I was like, oh goodness, how do you do this knot? This is kind of crazy. So you do have to kind of push and pull on this. And there we go. That's the first part of the snake knot. And so you're just going to repeat this and you've got a, we've got a bit of a pattern here. So what I'm going to do now is you can, you can use your finger. I found it a little bit easier to create my knots. So I'm going to go around with my right one and then I'm going to take my left one and I'm going to come from, always come from behind and pull that through. And now you're going to come with your left one again and go over the right one. So I'm just going to go over and then I'm going to go back under and then come up the left hand side of that. So always on the other side of that and pull that nice and tight. So the first one that I always pull tight is that one that I was just pulling with. Get that first one situated there. You can see it'll loop over this way and then you can pull this one tight and that's how we create that. So now what I do is I usually turn it on the side and then I pull my leather nice and tight. And I know it's hard to see because I've got my fingers there, but I have to use my fingers to pull it tight. So that's the start of that. So now I'm going to repeat a bunch of times, many, many times. So make my loop and then I take my left one. So you're always wrapping with your left and just looping with your right. And then we're going to take our left one again we're going to go over top of this and then underneath. So it's a pretty basic, pretty simple knot. It's just getting it where you want it to go. And so again, I'm going to bring this one up so that it's sort of where I want it. And then I tighten up with the other one. And you can see that that's created that knot. So now I turn it to the side a little bit. And then I just kind of pull it tight. And there we go. So I'm going to pull that around and then come up through the bottom. And I always find it's easier to hold on to the whole thing so that it doesn't go away from you. And now we're going to take our end and I just, I don't worry about this whole part that's, you know, that I'm working with here. I just use the end part here. So I'm just going over top and then underneath there. So. That makes it pretty simple. Now, one of the things that you can do to make sure that you are in the, um, like you're doing it correct, is you're gonna have something that looks like this. It kind of looks a bit like a, a Celtic knot of sorts. If you don't have something that looks like that, then it's likely not working properly. So that was one of the um, things that I did to kind of um, make sure that I was doing it the right way was I found a little trick. I'm like, oh, that looks like a Celtic knot. Okay, that one's good. So then I can tighten them up. So I get this first one tightened up and then I go on my next one. See, I didn't tighten that one up very much and it doesn't look very good. So make sure that first one is tightened up and then I put it on the side and then get it nice and tight. So I'm going to do this seven times. So I've got one, two, three, four. So I'm going to create a fifth one. So this is one of these great ones. I always like to find projects that I can uh, work on when I'm watching a movie or something like that. And once you get the hang of this, this is totally one of those pieces. So see, I almost let that go. You cannot let this go or it doesn't, it doesn't work. So go around and up through that and then pull. So always keep hold of your knots and you'll have a lot more control. So get that first one in place and then we'll pull that one tight. Now this knot can um, twist a little bit if you're not careful. So you want to make sure that you're going in a nice straight line like that. So just watch that you're, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is to make sure that your tension is equal. Because if I left one side 
a little bit looser, then we're going to start ending up with a bit of a curve in it, and we don't want that. So pull the left one through, and then I just sort of swap hands and take the end of that left one and go around and then under. So see there we've got our little sort of Celtic knot looking thing. Get that first one tightened up there a bit and then we can pull on the right one and then I turn it and get them nice and tight. Now this knot really does hold tight. It's awesome. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to create one more. Come up through the back there. And then I'm going to take that same one and go over top and then come out underneath there. Always work from underneath. So get that into place and then so sometimes you just have to push it up with your finger and then pull it tight and then we can pull the other one and then I, I always do turn it sideways it just gives me a little more leverage when I go sideways so that gives us seven knots in a row and look at how great this is I love how this knot looks it's very very cool looking now you'll end up with a little tiny bit of um, a difference on the end but it won't be much so if you all of a sudden have something that looks like a really big amount that means that you're probably doing it wrong so you should end up with equal amounts so now I'm going to put on this um, spacer bead and I want to push it up there nice and tight There we go. I just kind of push it up, make sure everything's nice and tight. And I usually take my um, knots and I kind of bend them a little bit and make sure they're nice and flat. And then we're going to start another group of seven. So I'm not going to make you watch the entire thing here. I just want to make sure that you understand what you do um, after you put on a spacer. So we're going to go with our underneath there. And then we're going to take our end and go over and then back under. and then get that one into place and then pull this one and then again I go sideways and then the, it's like the first one that we did up here the first ones are always kind of a little more of a struggle after you put on that spacer so I'll do one more and then I'll show you how I finish this off because I've got another one sort of made there because these do take a fair bit of time which is good. You know, I like to have projects that take a bit of time. I don't always want something to be finished uh, in five seconds, like the first bracelet. So I pre-did part of one because I knew that it, um, I didn't want to sit here for an hour uh, doing this part. And this one is actually fairly easy. If you do make a mistake, you can see right away and it's pretty easy to sort of, uh, you know, remove it and pick it back. So that's what we're going with so far. All right, so here's another one that I was working on. So this one is made with copper and the black, and I absolutely love this one. I think this is so good. So in your kit, if you choose to get the kit, you'll get to choose the color of your metals, and I think we have about three different colors, and we have about four different colors of leather. Um, this one is long. This one's made for a man, so um, we will give you enough to make probably a nine-inch bracelet. And the good thing is that you can just add some more of the knots if you don't have enough spacers and you have somebody that's got a very large wrist. You could change this to like every eight or you could add more like I've done at the end here. So this is really customizable, which is really great. So I'm just gonna end it right there because that's the size that I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure for my button. So I'm just gonna put my button in between here and then I know that I want to have my next knot right about there. So if you've watched my videos before, you know, oops, I've got to go back in camera a bit better here. So if you watch my videos before, you know that um, I often do barrel knots. So if you feel more comfortable doing a barrel knot right here, you could, and it would look just as nice. But I'm going to continue on with a snake knot because I think it looks really cool here. So what I'm going to do is make my little loop, and then I'm going to pull my end through and then I'm going to go around and then I come back on this side so it's exactly the same thing and that looks like our little clover there and now I need to sort of place this one here about where I want it to um, tighten up 
So I'm not going to tighten this knot up completely until I know that it fits in there. So that one looks like it's going to be a little tight. So I just kind of maneuver it around and that's better. So I know that my knot needs to be right there. So I'm just going to sort of place my fingers there. And now you don't want to end up with a sort of a bulge there. So I'm going to tighten it up against my fingernail and then that gives you some leverage and it's some place for the knot to tighten up. And so now you can see um, that we don't have anything bulging out and that's going to fit in there perfectly. So I'm going to do this knot. I think I'm going to do, what am I, did I do on my sample here? I did three of them. So we do want to make sure that this one is really nice and snug because this is going to be what um, holds the bracelet together at the end. So we're going to make sure that we take a few minutes to make sure that this is nice and tight. So we're just going to tighten these up. So we'll go on the side again and give it a little tug. And so you can see that creates a nice little end there. So make my loop, take my left one, go underneath. And I'm going to switch hands, take that end and come around and up through that left hole there. So I sort of bring it up and sometimes it can kind of get away from you, but you know, you can usually pull it back. It's just a little knot. Don't let it boss you around. So there we go. Get that nice and snug. All right. So now on the end, you can kind of do whatever you want. If you want, uh, you could tie another little tiny knot on each side if you were a bit nervous. But all I'm going to do um, is take some glue and I'm going to probably, you know, be fairly liberal with my glue. So I'm going to go in there pretty good. You won't see it. It'll dry um, clear. Um, so I'm going to go in the end there and I'm going to go a little bit here and then I'm going to go a little bit in here. You just kind of want to make sure that it's all very secure. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'll be right back. All right, so my glue hasn't quite dried, but I want to get on with the video, so I'm just going to trim it. So I'm going to trim right about here. Again, you can make this your own. You can leave it a little longer and make little knots on the end. You know, just do whatever kind of works for you. But with the glue, that will really help. And make sure that you do put enough, like I probably didn't put enough there, but that just shows you how you're going to end it. So now when we do this up, we have something that looks very striking. Um, and very, but very sort of simple and that's what most men seem to like they want something that looks really sharp so that is the um, black one with the copper and I've sort of pulled it it's going to look like this when it's on you which is just like a looks like a snake vertebrae which is kind of cool I also have this one that I made uh, with the antique green and then I used the uh, antique brass findings that one is really really pretty and then the one that we were working on at the beginning is with the antique blue and then the antique silver. So again, you'll get to choose your color of metals. And I think we have just these three. And then you're going to have maybe uh, four or five different colors of leather. So this one will be a, a fairly affordable bracelet, um, super easy to whip up. And you can wear this, um, you know, stacked together with different um, styles of bracelets, different leather bracelets. I think this one would be a really great addition to your uh, collection. So this one will be available in kit form, just like the other one. You just go into the drop down menu and you will click on the link that will take you to my uh, fully secure website. So there you have it. We have our two men's bracelets. I hope this keeps everybody happy. We've had so many requests for men's bracelets and I think these are some really great additions. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from everybody. And please make sure to subscribe to my channel as it really does help it out. I want to thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next one.